Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Matt here with Toasty DIY, and today we're going to be doing a review of the JG Aurora A5S. If you're looking for a 3D printer, this one may be the one for you. So let's go ahead and talk about the specs and if you should consider buying it. One thing to note, this is one of the more expensive Chinese made 3D printers that you can get coming in at around $400. So do keep that in mind when you are looking at this 3D printer. So Matt and I both don't have a ton of 3D printing experience, but we got enough. So we actually had an Anet A6 not too long ago that I actually decided to get rid of. That is a $180 printer and you have to completely put it together yourself. This one comes in literally two pieces. It takes about 15 minutes, give or take, to put everything together and get it literally turned on and working. The Anet A6 is a great open source printer. It's half the price, but at the same time, it is not metal, it's all 3D printed parts and it is not sturdy at all. Like if you move it or touch it or do anything, you have to re-level the bed. The bed leveling is completely manual. There's no assistance whatsoever. This one does have a, a sort of auto leveling feature that helps you level it. So just keep in mind, there are cheaper printers from some other companies, but this is one of the, I guess you could say nicer uh, printers that I found. It has a huge build plate. It's all metal design, it has a touch screen and a bunch of other features that we're gonna go over now. So one key thing to note as far as the size of the printer, because that's one of the most important parts for most people, is this thing has a 305 by 305 by 320 millimeter build plate. That is one of the largest DIY, like at home yourself 3D printers on the market. And like I said, this is the upgraded version. So there's some other really cool goodies that they've included. It also has a 2.8 inch touch screen that has full color and everything it actually works really well and surprisingly user friendly. Another cool feature is it has filament runout detection. So as soon as it realizes that the filament is almost out, it actually will set off a little alarm saying, hey, add new filament so that you can actually keep the process going or you can pause the print, add your filament and then keep it going. Another cool thing that it has that the Anet did not have is it has a auto resume feature where if it becomes unplugged or your SD card comes out, your computer shuts down where you're printing from it, you can actually resume the print exactly where it left off and it should come out the exact same as uh, when you were printing it before. So to point out some of the key features, it does a filament diameter, pretty standard 1.75 millimeters, has an accuracy of 0.1 millimeters, which is pretty good. The nozzle diameter that it comes with is a 0.4 millimeter. The nozzle temperature that the extruder can reach is up to 240 Celsius, which is uh, pretty impressive. The hotbed can get up to 100 degrees Celsius, which if you're doing ABS, you absolutely need. The machine actually does weigh a total of 13.5 kilograms. I'm not sure what that is to pounds, but it's pretty heavy because it's all metal. So now we have the 3D printer turned on. The fan does pretty much always spin, at least out of the box, unless you change it. But as you can see, it's a pretty easy to navigate menu. This is all you got. You can't really scroll or anything. Um, so this is where you can actually prepare. You can uh, change the extruder heat. You can add it in increments by changing. See, we have 10 Celsius, one degree or five. This is how you change the bed heat. That's how you change extruder heat. So right now we're actually preheating the extruder. We can go ahead and do the bed as well. So now we're preheating both things. That's actually happening in the background. We have all of the basic uh, move features, which this is actually a really nice thing to have as well. And you can change the increments that that moves. So you can see I can move the Z axis up by 10 millimeters. I can put it down to 0 0.01. Um, auto home, you can change each axis to go home as well, or I can do all. And then another cool thing is for actually doing um, your test extruding or just getting it to feed filament. I can extrude filament in, I can pull it out. I can change the increments, how fast it goes. It's a pretty advanced printer, honestly. This is the part that's pretty cool too for leveling. So when you click first, it's gonna go to this first corner. It's basically gonna go to the corner for you and put it exactly where it needs to be leveled. You take yourself a piece of paper or a thin business card, slide it under the nozzle to make sure it's leveled. You can do that with all four um, axes, including the middle. So the part for changing the filament is pretty easy. You just literally put the filament into this feeder and then the stepper motor feeds it through this cable and all the way down to your actual nozzle. That's so much easier than what I used to have to deal with. You can change your font. You can change the icon that it has uh, displaying at the beginning, calibrate the LCD screen, and then you can turn the motors off. So like I said, pretty user friendly, pretty easy. Nothing's really complicated. You can change the languages here as well. So honestly, Let's go ahead and do a test print and we'll talk about it a little bit more while it's printing. All right, so we're getting ready to go into time-lapse mode here in just a second, but as you can see, we're printing off that really basic uh, benchy boat, which uh, is really the most basic benchmark um, you can print. We're doing uh, 80 millimeter per second with like 140 um, uh, speed when it's not printing. So we're printing at a pretty fast speed. And like I said, this is with minimal setup. Literally the only things I've done is took it out of the box, leveled it, and that was it. Uh, and then I brought it to the office after I'd already done 
uh, finished leveling it and everything, and it still seems to be printing fine. My old printer, I would have had to take it halfway apart uh, to get it to start printing again, but so far we're looking good. I did put a little bit of just an Amazon Basics glue stick on here. That's what these little swirl marks are. Sometimes adding glue to your uh, hotbed can really help with your prints to stick, especially on those starting layers. So let's go ahead and just uh, get a time lapse of this thing printing now. Alright guys, so we got this print done and it came right off of there. We even have text on the bottom which is actually somewhat readable. That's pretty impressive. I didn't even know that that was there. Um, but you can see like the little holes and everything. This is 80 millimeters per second and honestly that's uh, pretty impressive. There's really not any major flaws. Like we even got the steering wheel inside of the boat Beautiful. actually printed. So I want to show you guys an old print. This was off the ANET that um, I did. Yeah, and I'll let Matt kind of see if he can, if I, I can't even stand that one up. There we go. Yeah, if you guys can just see a little side by side, which I'm gonna pull up my phone light too real quick, just so you can, uh, so you can really see the difference. It's, it's a very drastic difference. Um, this is probably one of the better prints I was able to get with the ANET. And like I said, the ANET is a great printer, and obviously if you configure it right, it could print just as well as this one. But just in the whole time period that I owned it, I owned it for over a year. Um, and I printed multiple, multiple prints and I could never get it to print well. Here's another really nice example. This is the new printer. This is also generic filament. This is printed with the actual Hatchbox uh, filament, which is some of the best filament you can buy. It's about $20 filament. And just look at all the flaws that we have going on in here. And then look at the difference of even though we're using cheap filament, this one just printed miles ahead better. I printed this one quicker even and it just overall did better. There's, there's a lot of hairs on the inside that I need to get rid of, but you can see that all of the grooves are properly there. So it's definitely a big out of the box difference, which is really nice and impressive. So I'm really happy with the 3D printer. So how about we uh, go ahead and wrap this video up and kind of talk about some, some key points that we feel about it. You guys can see this thing out of the box was actually really easy to set up. I know I didn't actually do the whole setup tutorial. There's tons of videos on that. I just figured I wanted to give you guys a really basic video on someone who doesn't have a lot of 3D printing experience to kind of give you guys more of an open end user review rather than all these guys out here that have 20 other 3D printers and can tell you a lot more information about it and tell you what it pairs to those. I'm telling you from a more of a beginner standpoint that I love this printer. I don't even have anything that I would want to change about it. So for $400, I'm actually very happy with the investment. So if you're interested in purchasing this 3D printer or any supplies that we mentioned in this video, links in the description down below, those will be affiliate links. So please click them if you do want to support the channel and all our channels in general, Toasty DIY and Toasty Bros. So as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Goodbye.